for disabled people. And maybe, Yaron, you can move on and I'll show you some of the things. First of all, the thing that we did that we continue budgeting the programs. You have to understand there were sometimes closed and they didn't work, but we didn't say, say the, okay, they don't work, we don't say pay you anymore, but we we continued the all the budgeting. So Kelly, what- Two more minutes, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but two more minutes. You hear? Okay. Uh, what we did is because we continued the budgeting, we could uh, make the all the coordinators and the leaders of, and the managing of the uh, groups to continue and go on. So that's how we also ma made the opportunity to continue the work. I, we found that if you let people with disability, we continue to, uh, to support them and to go with them and to try to hold them all this time, sometimes with web webinars on the, or uh, groups uh, on the, we had to sometimes to teach them how to uh, learn the, how to learn the, uh, all the uh, techno technology that it was sometimes new for them. And that's how we tried, I make it very short, uh, how that we tried, maybe you can go to another, another slide, uh, how we tried to make uh, all these opportunities to stay at work and to also to upgrade them. To encourage, uh, we encourage, like I said, a lot of cooperative, a lot of cooperations between all the suppliers. We used to, we kept all the time the connection with uh, employees, uh, employers, uh, to have uh, to have give the direct uh, continue and not to leave them that they will stay and stay the people uh, that, that they will continue how to hire the the our people that uh, used to work on them, uh, on their job. And I have to say that they, we, they had, they were very loyal. I think that most of the people that was escort with us during uh, our suppliers, that Elvin will uh, introduce you in a minute, uh, one of them. Uh, Speaking of which, Shelly, we're, we're pretty much at the end of your time. I gave you extra yes. time, I apologize. So we have to finish. Okay, on. so I think that uh, that was, we, it showed that, that uh, it helped to remain people at jobs more than other people. So I think that that was one of the uh, ideas. Sorry, but because of the technology uh, here, it was- I apologize. Uh, thank yes. you very much, Shelly, for that important presentation. And I do apologize for the technical glitches. That was the problem, I guess, of going first. Our next guest uh, is a colleague from uh, Uruguay. Her name is Eugenia Gonzalez. I met uh, Eugenia, I believe, for the first time maybe five years ago when I was in Montevideo, and we've stayed as partner organizations between the foundation, the foundation that she works for, called the Ben Sadon Laurent Foundation. Uh, and Eugenia is the director of institutional relations and the head of public relations for that organization, which is a very important organization dealing with the employment of people with disabilities in Uruguay. Please, Eugenia, it's yours. Thank you, David. Good afternoon. I will briefly present Fundación Benzadón Laurent and the challenges and strategies during COVID-19 pandemic. Let me share the screen with you. Okay. So who are we? Fundación Benzadón Laurent is a Uruguayan NGO committed to social and labor inclusion of persons in situation of disability. We work from the social model of disability and the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. We are person-centered, that is, we work from the person, his or her skills, abilities, training, interests, but not from his or her situation of disability, although we do take it into account, of course. We focus on business needs and we work with persons in any type of situation of disability, whether it is physical, is um, sensory, psychosocial, intellectual or organic. And we work with a supported employment methodology adapted to Uruguayan reality. For example, in a labor inclusion process, we do interviews, we get to know the company, what it does, its needs, its accessibilities and the job position. We do sensitization talks and we do induction and accompaniment to both the person and the company. 
We have several programs, one of them being the Labor Inclusion Program. The other one is the Professional Training for Persons in Situation of Disability, Awareness Program, Technical Training, Orientation and Consultation Space, and Space for the Promotion of Rights, Alliances, and Networks. But what about Uruguay? Some data about Uruguay. More than 500,000 persons in Uruguay are in situation of disability, according to the last census of 2011. And we have a law, law 19,691, that promotes the work of the per persons in situation of disability in the private sector. By this law, it states that private employers with 25 or more permanent workers must hire persons in situation of disability, according to a gradual scale, until reaching 4% of total permanent staff. And there are partial exemptions of social security contributions for employers that comply with the law. But what about the challenges we face during the lockdown in Uruguay? It is important to state that in Uruguay, the lockdown was voluntary, but it was strictly abided by the population. So we had general unemployment and reductions and cease of activities. So there were previously hired people in situation of disability that hadn't generated the legal right to unemployment insurance. We also had and have alimentary needs and the appearance of mental health issues. On the other hand, there were company human resources managers that had to deal with a completely new scenario. They had layoffs, unemployment insurance, home office, uh, cease of activities. And at the foundation at that time, there were on-site classes going on that had to be canceled. And we had to see how to adapt the FBL's activities to home office. And what were our strategies? Well, one of them was finding out alternatives to maintain work of persons in situation of disability. We gave and give consulting aid to human resources managers, and we held a workshop for human resources managers on labor strategies during sanitary emergency. This was a very good initiative where human resources managers shared experience between each other. We also carried out social actions to help families and persons in situation of disability. We delivered food baskets. We gave assistance in getting subsidies, social security benefits and governmental subsidies or, or allowances. We gave and gave support during unemployment. The technical area of the FBL made calls of containment to persons and workers in situation of disability. We also carried out interventions and the compensation of persons with psychosocial disability and in situations of gender or domestic violence. And we did and do a strong networking with other organizations so that the uh, social actions take into account intersectionality. We also um, designed and developed new strategies to reach companies more efficiently. We implemented three pilots one of them being the job search on employment website to contact hiring companies. We also did LinkedIn actions focused on IT companies and a webinar focused on IT companies. And why was that? Because we have graduates on software testing and we wanted them to find a job as soon as possible. We also have another pilot on search engine optimization of FBL through massive publication of articles. And we have to adapt our supported employment methodology. We now do virtual meetings, virtual assessment of accessibility, and virtual accompaniment of both the company and the worker in situation of disability. We also have to carry out actions to maintain the group unity of students until on-site classes could be restarted. And we implemented and continue implementing yeah, I just tools. want to tell you have about a minute and a half to go. Perfect, perfect. Thank you, David. And we also implemented tools for home office. Microsoft Teams, OneDrive, Zoom, and uh, we developed a health and safety protocol and measures for return to on-site work, which we did on July the 1st till December. Now we are at home office again. But what about our future strategies? In Uruguay, more than 50% of the population lives in the capital city or its urban surroundings. So we want to expand our work to cater for the rest of the country. And one way of doing this is by giving online courses. So we want to give online courses, we want to expand our work to the rest of the country, and we want to design and implement new communication actions to reach more companies and to promote the inclusion on the labor and social inclusion of persons in situation of disability. So, well, Fundación Mensa Don Laurent is now looking for funds to implement all these strategies. 
Um, that's it, that's a very brief and quick presentation and I remain at your entire disposal. Should you need more detailed information, please feel free to contact me or the foundation at info at fundacionbl.org. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eugenia Gonzalez. Uh, for that very important presentation. I wanna just make a couple announcements before we continue. First, I note that uh, Robin Tim Weiss, I hope I pronounced your name correctly, Robin, we've only had email contact, has joined us. He's been instrumental on behalf of the Zero Project in uh, arranging for this presentation today, our, our session. So thank you, Robin, for joining us. I also wanna point out that besides the, all of the people who've joined us on Zoom, we actually have more people uh, watching the conference at this time, our session on Facebook. So you should know there's a lot more people watching besides what you're seeing now in front of you. Uh, I now wanna to move to our next uh, panelist who is Yariv Lears, who uh, is 54 years old. In the year 2016, he moved with his family from the United States to Israel. Hence his English is pretty darn good. And he lives in Tel Aviv in a community living program. Uh, and he's been employed by a particular company. I'll let him introduce it uh, for the last, uh, since 2018, including during the entire time of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And so I think uh, Yariv will give us a very interesting perspective. Yariv, uh, with your permission, I'll ask you some questions. Is that how we'll go ahead? Sure, go ahead. Okay. First hey. of all, tell us where do you work and go what ahead. is your job there? I work, uh, I work at a factory called uh, uh, Sanos and Brunos in Hota Sharon. And basically, basically my uh, job duties working there and uh, I'm on a logistics side working in a big warehouse uh, filling all kinds of like uh, filling uh, all kinds of liquids from the barrels uh, as well barrels for the for, for all the line of workers and uh, clean, uh, do some cleaning up as well as uh, uh, as well as what else I do sorting out uh, so, so the other labels uh, labels into the sh shelves in the other in the other in the other part of the warehouses. As is what I do, and uh, uh, also also usually in the mornings, I I straighten out the, the wooden skids in certain orders for. Oh, I think we may have lost you, Yariv. Do you hear me? Because your picture's frozen. Let's give him a second. Sharon, do you want to try to call him and see if he can reconnect? Sorry. Oh, wait, you're back. Sorry. Yaron, we lost you. For, I mean, Yariv, we lost you for a second. Yes, I'm on. Yes. Okay, good. Uh, let me move on to the next question then. You were defined apparently during the COVID-19 pandemic from the very beginning as an essential worker. Can you tell us why and what that means to you? Means, uh, means very well. Uh, it means I'm still going to work, uh, work uh, daily on a on a regular daily basis, even do, even during the COVID. Because since it's an essential worker, I we deal with all the cleaning uh, all the cleaning products that all that distribute all to supermarkets, well, supermarkets and all kinds of stores that still remain open to the COVID. So, uh, which I which I think is a very important part of, <laughs> part of still going to work. Thankfully, but thankfully so. But did you have any fear when you started work? When you continued working during the uh, beginning of the pandemic? Thankfully, not. Uh, thankfully, not too. Uh, thankfully, not too much fear. As long as I follow directions by wearing, wearing masks all the time, uh, all the time, uh, remaining social, uh, remaining also in social distance between our workers as well. Very good. Uh, yeah. What kinds of supports our organization Israel when I know is tasked with helping you uh, to, to succeed on the job? What kinds of supports have you gotten and uh, how has that worked out for you? Uh, where, where, where I found my account line counselor, Lila, uh, was, always, was always there in case I, in case I in, 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 uh, ever needed her. Uh, she calls you know she calls me at one uh, like every couple of weeks see how I'm doing and so we're doing and things like that that which is very wonderful of course and did the company where you work have to make any special kinds of uh, adaptations or adjustments to make you more comfortable there and to help help you succeed uh, yeah, uh, we did uh, yeah yes we uh, yes we did in many ways like for for example for example uh, 
a few times a few times a year we do we, we do uh, we do meetings at a big auditorium at the other part of the com uh, company where the offices are our we use all do the gatherings there for all kinds of meetings like safety but of course this year this past year we weren't able to do it do it so uh, so so uh, we we did it a different way by every handing out like sheets of paper to read and answer what answer questions, make sure that we're aware of the safety procedures and things like that. Plus, when we had once in a while, we had the meetings with the uh, higher bosses. We do it like small groups at a time, <clears throat> time uh, as opposed to large one large gathering. Excellent. Like that. Anything you want to add uh, before we move on to the next speaker? Is there anything you wanted to say particularly to this group? Uh, that's uh, that's uh, that's really about it. Uh, that for, uh, thank, uh, thank, thanks everything for all the help that you're giving, all the opportunity that you're giving me, uh, me to my counsel Leela, Leela and uh, Ilana before that, uh, who she originally helped me, uh, helped me out to first get the job, and uh, that's uh, and that's really it. Fantastic. Once again, thanks. Well, thank you so much, Yari, for joining us today. I want you to know that. Uh, one of the things we've learned during this pandemic of the last year is to reevaluate who's essential and who is a hero. And I think you fit both of those categories and uh, we really appreciate your joining us here today. Our thank next, you. Uh, thank you. Our next uh, panelist is Rami Sar Shalom, who is the CEO of the Pamit store chain. It's a chain of stores in Israel. Pamit is the leading company in Israel in importing, marketing and distributing products for packaging and single use and operates a chain of retail stores with 21 branches throughout Israel. Rami? It's nice to meet you. I'm very happy to be here in this uh, organization of Zero. Thank you very much about your uh, invitation to, to, to be here. Thank you very much. Um, uh, yes. A, a short story about Permit. Permit is, is, is a, a business in Israel that have two part of companies. One part of the company is distributing and, uh, and selling marketing for the, for the record market, hotel, restaurant, and catering, and mm. for business market for like chain stores, uh, food stores, and another, another uh, store that sells our, our branding. We have a, in a chain store, our, my, our own chain store, it's called Pyramid Store. It's a 21 branches in all over Israel. And we already have about 400 employers in Israel, in all in Israel. Um, the Amit company is started from a small business uh, 27, 20, 27 to 28 years ago in Jerusalem. It was a, a business of three, three uh, employers. Now it's 400 employers. And all over the way, we are looking uh, to the app and know the, the place we are grew from it. That's, it's, uh, our, it's coming together. To, to be very contact to the to to your starting. Uh, our uh, now our logistic place is in Bechemesh, uh, and the company is selling over um, sixty million euro a year. Yeah. Um, I want to show you about our management proportions um, and why we are here and why you are in this uh, in zero now. Uh, in Permit Company, um, as a business that is very, very, very believing about growing and profit as a side to side to be your best in the company, in the society. Make company and society. In Hebrew, it's uh, the same name. It's called Hevra, but it's different, uh, different uh, looking when you, see, when you look about your company or when you're looking about the society of, of, the, of, the, of the country. And uh, we are thinking that uh, we have a present, a big present, when we are businessmen or business, uh, in business, already business, that you have a present that you get um, to give your best back to the, to the society and to be part of the society. And uh, our uh, preferred uh, um, 
a story of a perception a business is mean do your best all over you need to do it if and you if you can do it inside the company is better than make a project when you make a project it's come and uh, you have a starting time and you have a um, um, when you stop it time but if it's in the inside is the company and inside the heart of the company it's for long term for yourself and long term for the for, for the society um, David you want to ask me of uh, okay I'm ready just wanted to make yeah yes. uh, you can make your presentation first sure uh, okay so the first question I wanted to ask you is, Tell us about, in terms of the company, what is your business model in terms of hiring people with disabilities and why is that important? Um, I want to say about what, what we are believing. We are believing that the Amit company is have a high employment diversity. And we have you, the diversity is part of our, of our company. Israel, as you know, I don't know uh, with the here, uh, looking at the uh, outside of Israel as know that is it coming from a lot of a, a part of the society and every part of the society look himself uh, as the need another need is another 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 thing that you need and when you make uh, organizations that every diversity together you have to look what the the, the part and the employers and the, the, and the men and the women need, and you have to make yourself uh, to be there for them and not they for you. And uh, I think that if uh, we are uh, looking about the employer as he who is, is, if it is disabled, of is religious or another, another thing, you have to, to look what you can give him to give you back. And did you indicate how many people with disabilities are employed in all your stores? Um, I, we are employee, uh, so all of, we have all over 400 employers and we have 14 employers uh, that with disabilities. Um, it's about uh, the first one, if you can change the uh, slide, please. This is, uh, I want to tell you about Yaki. This is Yaki. Yaki came to us uh, when he was 21 years old. Um, he was after the education uh, time in Israel, and uh, he was a very young, young, young man. He came to us in 97, uh, 97, and uh, now he's 46 years old. He's a supervisor uh, in the um, uh, packing uh, area in the uh, pyramid. And now we have another employers that's uh, learning from him how to, to make a better job and how to make uh, and how make, make already to be to, to be good. We only have about half a minute left, Rami. So maybe I'll just ask: uh, Is there anything you want to say in terms of uh, what it's been like during this crisis, and and uh, you know your experiences in terms of the effect on people with disabilities, and and what you might have learned from it? Um, I think that the COVID-19 uh, epidemic was a very, very uh, time that uh, you can make to be a lead more than even that you have it all the time. And I think that uh, the time that you don't know what it's going to be for the business, it's make to uh, like, like, a demid, like a damage that you have to change everything and know to, what to do tomorrow. I think that in the part of one in March 20, when it comes the COVID-19, uh, the first time that you, you do is that you freeze. You don't know what to do for, for, for tomorrow. And uh, in the first time that you don't know what the health and what is the, to be about the, the employers, that, is, that we think that we have to keep them out of uh, the business. Um, Maybe I think that it's more because we want to keep them and not uh, look about the job, about, about to keep you, you don't uh, to be ill in, in, in the job. 
uh, in the next uh, time after the uh, first time we make back everybody to come to job and uh, even in the two times of uh, closing the closing the market uh, they come to work and we understand how much uh, they need the job and how much we need them for the job uh, together um, to keep the normal life for all for 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 all of all, all of us um, thank you Rami. Uh, we're gonna have to uh, finish this up I'll give you another 10 seconds okay 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 uh, okay that's all David it's okay it's okay, okay. Rami, thank you so much I, I want to point out to all of you that we've tried to make this uh, uh, session uh, about all the different aspects and so we had someone from government Shelley we had someone uh, who's a supported employee himself Yariv uh, we had uh, of course Rami who has the perspective of an employer we had someone from uh, an organization in in Uruguay of course and last but not least I'd like to present to you uh, Racheli Frochter who is the uh, director of community placement services for our organization, Israel Elwin, in the branch called Central Israel and, and the Sharon. And uh, she's been working with people with disabilities over 15 years, and I'd like to get her perspective as well in terms of supporting people during this crisis. Racheli, do you want me to ask you the questions? Yes, thank you. Good afternoon, David. Okay, thank you for joining us. What type of support does Israel Elwin provide to employers and service recipients within its job placement program? Okay, so um, for service uh, recipients, we provide employment training courses aiming to uh, find jobs in the comp competitive job market, including uh, professional courses, group sessions, one-on-one -on -one preparation, interview simulation. We help them uh, strengthen working skills, such as teamwork, consistency, obtaining authority, of course, support in finding, in finding workplaces. Uh, support you in the first stages in a, in a new place and later on. During, during uh, the COVID-19 period, we help our service recip uh, reception uh, with the rights fulfillment. Um, while being uh, for loaded unemployment, we provide alternative support during lockdown, such as uh, one-on-one or group uh, professional workshops, online or face-to-face, -face, according to directives. Uh, finding new workplaces for those who were fired, uh, emotional support. Uh, this is a very complicated uh, uh, period. Uh, ongoing contact with um, uh, during the lockdown uh, uh, was very meaningful uh, for service recep uh, receptions and also family members. This is uh, the service uh, reception support for employer. Um, first of all, for us, the employer is an important factor in the job uh, placement uh, program. We believe it is very meaningful to support the employer as well as the service uh, recipients. We support and train the uh, employer in hiring uh, employees uh, with disabilities, including the adaptation required. Sometimes we, we conduct group training for staff. For example, for example in Sano Factory, where Yariv works, uh, we participate in a staff meeting. Uh, explaining about uh, people with disability to the staff, uh, the staff share their concern, and uh, we gave tips, practical tips, uh, um, assisting uh, employers, of course, in uh, rights fulfillment, uh, in receiving uh, incentives, grants from the government. Um, one of the main goal, uh, goals is uh, meditating between service recipients and employers. Mediating. Do you want me to move on to the next question or yes, did you really go into it? Okay. Which special types of support were provided to employers during the period of the COVID-19 crisis? Okay, firstly, understanding them, okay? Uh, being empathetic to the, their complicated situation. From our experience, employers feel when we really uh, put ourselves in their shoes and understand them. Secondly, trying to meet uh, their unique needs. Uh, this period, finding essential uh, employees for employers who needed additional workers. Uh, we provide meaningful for, several, for service recipients uh, who started a new job, while taking uh, consideration that uh, the employer are less available 
especially in this period. Supporting service recipients were uh, forloaded in fulfilling the rights, uh, training service recipients, uh, employees uh, in following directives, like uh, wearing masks, uh, social distancing, hygiene. And which adaptations took place in terms of locating new workplaces or strengthening existing ones? Okay. New employers, uh, we invested in uh, mapping and locating wanted jobs, uh, mapping essential work uh, workplaces and job uh, placement in essential jobs like uh, supermarket, uh, preparing orders, uh, deliveries, uh, also training service recipients for essential jobs like uh, customer service, food industry, preparing orders uh, for existing employers, uh, of course, ongoing contact with the employers, um, investing now to a better time in the future, okay, keep in touch with them. Mm -hmm. uh, also, rewarding, re rewarding uh, certificates of appreciation for some of them, uh, advertising uh, employers in the media and social networks, uh, and of course, the open door uh, employer uh, campaign. You want me to tell you about this comp campaign? Sure. Okay. So on December uh, 3rd, the International Day for a Person with Disabilities, we launched the Open Door Employer Campaign, uh, aiming to maintain uh, existing employers and uh, recruiting new ones. Uh, every employer high in, uh, employees with disabilities uh, receive the Open Door uh, Employer Sticker. Can you see that? This is the sticker. Okay. Um, um, this sticker uh, was presented on the door. Uh, Israel Elvin staff took a picture with the employer and the sticker and shared on the social media to spread the word. Uh, this was a call aiming to encourage the inclusion of uh, employees with disabilities in the competitive job market. This creates, of course, a buzz, and uh, we continue to give out the, stick the stickers and uh, taking photos with the employers. I would like to share it, uh, with you some photos. We have one minute, so keep going, but just, you know. Okay, okay. so um, I can see, you already see the, the picture. Uh, I want to tell when uh, an employer uh, decides to put the open door ex um, employer sticker in front of his uh, business, it shows that um, he welcome people with disabilities uh, in his business. And so you can see a few photos, uh, for example, uh, maybe um, who shared the, the PowerPoint? Okay, this is David. Our David, you, <laughs> and with the David, the employer, okay? David, the employer uh, is the, um, uh, the manager of uh, Max in Jerusalem, Max, Max Talk. Um, most of them, most of you know uh, it's a uh, part of a chain uh, of uh, retail uh, stores. And um, we have a very good uh, relationship uh, with this uh, um, chain. So this is one of the picture. Um, can you move on? This is a, a yeah. picture yeah. of the uh, last picture because we're, we're finished our time, but go ahead. Um, okay, so this is a, a three um, service recipients who works in a garage in Um El Fahem, also one of our employers. And um, let me say something. Uh, um, okay, so th this is the the um, open door employer campaign. For us, uh, generally in Israel, Elvin, uh, it is important to support the employers. They are an essential factor uh, in our efforts uh, in finding uh, jobs for people with disabilities uh, in this uh, competitive job market, especially in this uh, complicated uh, period. Okay, well, thank you so much, Racheli, for giving us this perspective of somebody supporting people with disabilities. That's a very, very important part of, of making this happen. And, and we really appreciate your work and what you presented. Uh, we have some time for questions. If anyone wants to ask questions, please go to chat. Uh, we will ask the questions for you. In the meantime, while we're waiting for that, I would like to ask Shelly a question. Where, are you there? She, yes, she is. Um, again, Shelly Nordheim works for the government in Israel. And I would be most curious to ask you, Shelly, what was it like those first few days of the pandemic when I would imagine that everything you knew about doing your job 
had to go out the window and you had to start from the very beginning. You're on mute, by the way. I have to say that uh, everything, uh, it felt like collapsing, okay? Because everybody was at home. Uh, all of my employers, uh, employees uh, went home. I stayed alone for more or less. And uh, it was very, very difficult to gather, at, to gather everything and to start uh, looking at, a, at a, a, a effective methods, how to deal with all this. But I think that uh, during the time we gathered ourselves and uh, we try to, we started to work with all of our suppliers. That Elvin is one of them, and uh, and to see how we can make a benefit from this situation and to grow from that, and not to stay just behind, uh, just you know, with crisis and very with panic, and how to gather gather everything. And I think that one of the um, feedback that we got us after the first shutdown. Um, we got that we were there for them, and we every all the suppliers and the, and the employers said that they felt that someone is running the uh, running the issue, the the occasion, and it's not just felt out that everything is collapsing. Still, we it was very important to us to see how we get we give uh, to the especially to special needs to, to the disabled people um, background that will, they will not uh, feel alone and will feel supported. I, I started to say before, if you had the, uh, the chance to hear me, that I think that one of the most important that if we found out that if we use, you continue uh, to uh, lead and to, to guide uh, and to escort these uh, people that we use, we all the time may give them uh, that support, um, they will start work because the employers are loyal to us. They know us. They know the supplier. They know the, the counselor. They know uh, and they know the, this employee. And I think that sometimes I saw that they will think twice to send them home before they send home all the others. And I, I have a very good, nice stories to tell about uh, how they... Um, uh, they saw how they recruit themselves to stay there and to give them the chance to, to continue work. And uh, I think that most of the time we, we just moved on to the, this computer. It, was of, it, it became our friend. Uh, Zoom is uh, running uh, all over Israel today. And uh, I think that we found out that sometimes it's better. It saves time. It can make, uh, uh, you know, geographic uh, places uh, to be shorter, uh, to be shorter, and we can uh, it, the distance become shorter and uh, closer. And uh, we find out that um, sometimes we can run something that together many supplies that before didn't uh, work together. Now they work together and they add help to each other. And we may combine uh, webinars on the courses on the computer. And we 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 try to find out how uh, to make it better uh, through this uh, peri period and not not to fall down and just to sometimes even to be to get better. To get better. Well, thank you. Thank you, Shelly. I, I, I think that it's important to mention that we as organizations, at least in Israel, uh, have worked together as much as possible, even more than before the pandemic, to make sure that we're heard by people in government like Shelly, like some of her uh, uh, colleagues in other government offices. And I think it's been a really important aspect that we've learned to work together even more than we ever did before. And I think we've gotten a lot of uh, uh, really uh, open, uh, uh, an, a listening ear, you might call it, from government people, including Shelley, as a result of the fact that we've tried to work together. I wonder if I could ask you, Henya, if you uh, have had a similar situation in, in Uruguay, whether you find that your colleagues in other organizations uh, maybe are collaborating with you in a different way than before the pandemic. Yes, yes, of course. Um, we, as a foundation, we always um, promote the networking and strong networking but during the pandemic or the, the lockdown in uruguay that it was a, str a stronger networker networking sorry with other organizations and organizations that not only worked um, in disability organizations that work for the human rights or for violence or or, or we also um 
promoted with other organizations a collaborative network which delivered food baskets. For, for instance, we, we created with organizations. So yes, it was a, a very strong networking and it was uh, promoted by the, the COVID-19 pandemic, yes. Well, thank you. I, uh, by the way, we only have about four more minutes, we were told by Robin, but I, I do wanna indicate that if anyone wants to ask a question in uh, Spanish, English, uh, Arabic or Hebrew, someone will be able to help uh, translate and answer it because uh, maybe people are intimidated by trying to ask their questions in English. But otherwise, in the meantime, while we're waiting to see if anyone does that, I would like to, in fact, Robin, we now have three minutes left. I'd like to ask Rami one more question in terms of the Pamit store. You know, Rami, during this pandemic, everybody becomes your friend, but also your enemy. We were afraid of being in contact with people in ways that we never had before. You have a, an operation of retail stores. To what extent did you see the issue of customers as being a way to bring in uh, disease and how you had to protect your employees, both with disabilities and without disabilities during this time? I think, I think, I think that it's a very, very um, um, challenge uh, to work in epidemic uh, situation. Uh, part of, uh, of the time you have to need to make a job and to work together and to do everything that you have to do like the best to the good service to, to, to customers. And part of the time you have to protect your, your uh, employers and it's uh, very, very difficult to make all together. Um, we have part of times that the, one of our employers uh, was sick and had to come to, to be close uh, another uh, uh, branch just because that was, was one, one corona, corona, it's very, very challenging. I think that uh, especially about the disabled uh, uh, employers, you have to keep them more. You have to, to have more to be guaranteed to be them uh, that's because they don't know to keep themselves uh, all the time. And uh, the challenge it was very, very, very high. I think that uh, we give them a place that's like a capsule that is more close to be there and uh, not to make around all the over the organization. And uh, when you understand that you have to give the employers with disabilities um, a, a different um, different act, actions to keep them, they understand it, the organization understand it, and all together uh, I, I, I understand it. Thank you, thank you very much. I think we're pretty much out of time. Uh, I wanna thank everybody from joining us, both those of you who are joined us by Facebook and those of you who are here with, uh, with Zoom. This has been an amazing experience, at least for me. I hope you enjoyed it as well. I, I would like to just maybe conclude by pointing out that uh, none of us are gonna be able to look back to the past anymore. The past is done. Uh, I think we mentioned when we, when we asked the question of Shelley that everything we knew about doing our jobs before we threw out the window. Well, that's not coming back. I think we all know that there's gonna be a different future. I wanna point out that I think it's gonna be a brighter future. I think that we've all learned things that we're gonna be able to use in our work. And so uh, we're all gonna be better at what we did before. And I hope that that'll be sooner than later. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Robin. Uh, David, for David, yes. David, we have uh, one question from uh, Talia Bender. Okay, maybe, well, we'll have to do it very quickly, but let me yeah, see. Yeah. If I how did you mean is, is this a question to anyone Talia? how did you maintain the relationships during lockdown between employers employees supporters government i suppose there were oh it's a question for me <laughs> uh i think we remained we were able to maintain those relationships because we all needed each other we couldn't do it without government government couldn't do it without us the employers were a key factor and obviously people with disabilities who needed work and hopefully many of them will be going back to work who lost their jobs uh had to rely on each other I'd like to talk about it some more, but I do think that we've been asked to finish this. So thanks for the question and thank you so much to everyone for joining us today. It was very exciting, at least for me. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye.